Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today I have another alcohol ink card to share with you with a wax seal and some vellum details. I think it turned out pretty neat. So let's jump right in. So I do have an A2 base, and then I am going to use my Waffle Flower Lacy Layers dies. I love these for backgrounds. I think that they just, they always add a little bit of elegance, a little bit something extra when you're just kind of creating layers, and I think they're a lot of fun. So I cut the... I guess it's a decal. It's not a decal. It's a scallop. There we go. I cut the scalloped edge out of some hammer mill cardstock. And then this part I'm going to cut out of some UPO because I am going to use some alcohol ink uh, to do the background of the card. And I did have a little piece that didn't want to cut through. That was okay. I just grabbed my scissors really quick and snipped it off. No problem. Um, I do every once in a while when I use my magic mat have UPO not want to cut nicely. So I usually just bring in my scissors and help the one small edge that didn't want to cut well. And then for my alcohol inks, I'm going to use two of the pearl alcohol inks. I have Villainous, which is the purple, and then Tranquil, which is the blue. And those are the only colors I wanted to use here. I just thought that they would be a really fun color palette. I do tend towards, you know, bringing pink in and sometimes yellow. And I just kind of wanted to focus on this color palette a bit more. And I'm going to work in layers. Usually, <clears throat> excuse me, usually when I do my alcohol ink backgrounds, I kind of do it in one go. You know, I put down the color, I move it around. I might add a little bit, but I never really let it dry in the middle. I kind of just keep working until it's something that I'm happy with. But with this, I kind of decided to treat it a little bit more like watercolor in the sense that you start out kind of slowly building up your colors, then you keep adding more layers if you want more vibrant colors and more more interest to go on in, in the coloring. So that's what I was thinking when I was creating this background. Um, not a technique I generally do with my alcohol inks, but I think that it turned out really neat because I got a lot more um, different color layers throughout the inks. And now granted, I am going to cover this up. So there is that because I wanted to add those leaves on top. But this is a really interesting technique that I'll want to explore again later on a panel that um, would get covered up a little less. Uh, it was just kind of a testing theory to kind of play with my inks and have uh, just a little bit of a different thought process when playing with my inks to kind of just create a bit more of a layering uh, of the two inks. So I think it turned out really pretty. You guys should let me know what you think. Alcohol inks are always a lot of fun to play with, especially if you can kind of just enjoy the process because they can be a bit, they're hard to control. So you kind of just have to be willing to uh, let them do what they want to do and then kind of work with that. So that's what I'm doing. And I am using blending solution with it because these are pearl inks. They have that mica in them. They do need blending solution to uh, kind of adhere to the UPO properly. So you can use uh, like an isopropyl alcohol to get more movement, but you would want to still bring in that blending solution to help the glycerin um, adhere to the paper and stay there. At least that is my understanding of it. I am not a professional by any, any means. I just listen to Tim Holtz videos and uh, kind of make sure I understand how to use the product to its best ability so that I'm never disappointed when I'm trying to create with. So yeah, so I did bring in the air blower as well to kind of help me get some movement. And you can see that I'm slowly building up layers wherever I feel like I want a little more color. So the first layer I kind of let pool out and it's very, you know, light and wispy on the edges. And then for the centerpiece of the, the part kind of going that diagonal, I've added a lot more, more color and I've kind of let it blo bloom a little less. So I've kind of created a more um, vibrant center with a kind of wisping out from there. Hopefully that kind of makes sense but that's what I was thinking as I was creating it and then we're going to work on the parts that are going to go on top so I have a piece of heavyweight vellum this is um, a heat like you can heat emboss on this vellum and I'm going to heat emboss three of the autumn blueprint stamps. You can see the leaves there. And I'm going to cut them out because I wanted just the leaf, not the lines. Though these stamps are stunning and they make great uh, images and focals. Um, but I am going to heat emboss them on to some um, heat resistant vellum or heat tolerant vellum. Uh, with the... Um, I usually use alabaster white. This is the alabaster white with sparkle. So this is the first time I've used this embossing powder and I like it. You guys know that I really like shiny things. I like sparkle. I like shimmer. So this embossing powder is phenomenal because it gives you a little bit of that within your um, embossing powder that is still white. So you can still see it really easily on the vellum. 
So I kind of like that. And I did use my Misty. These are red rubber stamps. So I did pull out the foam that is in the Misty so that they would stamp really well um, because they are quite thick in comparison. And then I'm going to bring in this sparkle here. I'm going to show it to you because it's the first time I've used it. And I'm like, oh, look at all that sparkle. I just love shiny things. I guess I'm like a magpie in that sense. I just, I just love what it adds to a card. Um, you know, like for me, I just, I want all the things to be shiny and sparkly. So I do tend towards that direction of creating, but you could do it with regular and it would still look really pretty. You could do it in that, like silver as well. And that would look really pretty too with the blue and purple. If you wanted to do a color instead of the white. And I thought that was really pretty. So I'm going to heat emboss these and then I am going to fussy cut them out. Um, there isn't a die set for these as far as I'm aware. I don't think that there's a die matching die set for most of Tim Holtz stamps. There's a couple of the older sets I think that do have, uh, but otherwise you just have to fussy cut them. But I feel like that was really simple for this. I mean, it does have lines kind of going everywhere, but that doesn't really matter in this instance because I'm going to cut them off. And though they do intersect in a few areas that I cut, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is, you know, it's not, as I believe it's Jennifer McGuire says, it's uh, it's handmade, not Hallmark. So in that thought, uh, you don't have to have perfection. Uh, I think the cards turn out stunning uh, regardless of whether or not they have small mistakes or little pieces that are not cut perfectly. Like that's kind of the beauty of them. So I kind of like to embrace that. But I am in a fussy cut. I find it easiest to cut with my uh, non-dominant hand and hold with my, sorry, and hold with my non-dominant hand and cut with my dominant hand. I am right-handed. So that's how I do it. Just the easiest way for me to do it. Um, yeah. So I'm going to fussy cut out all three leaves. I'm only going to show you one because I mean, it's the same process for all of them. Um, and I just wanted to quickly mention if you haven't entered into my 4,000 subscriber giveaway, make sure you jump over and do that really quick. We have a couple more days before I'm going to draw the winner. It's a really cool gift pack. And I just, I want everybody who has subscribed to my channel to have a chance at that gift pack. I am going to uh, draw three names. One name will get the the prize pack and then there will be two other winners who are going to get a card and stickers that I've handmade and designed uh, that I sell in my Etsy shop. So uh, hopefully that people think that's a cool prize and they want to join in. So make sure that you do jump over and uh, check out that prize if you are interested. Uh, it is open to anybody international, uh, local, as in Canadian or American, whoever wants to enter, I will pay the shipping uh, to get it to you just as a thank you for, you know, supporting my channel and supporting my dreams and, you know, being a part of this journey with me. So make sure you jump over and enter. I will have that linked up in the card so you can check it out, but it is also um, not the, like not Monday's video, but the video before that is the giveaway. So make sure you go and enter so you have a chance to win. So I, you did see me adhere down my Yupo. I chose to adhere this to the base before I adhered the leaves on top so that I knew how much distance I could have, um, around with my leaves because I want my leaves to hang outside of this the lacy layers panels I want them to kind of have a little more interest in, and stick out beside each other so they're not all just kind of sitting on top of each other so you get none of the detail and sadly on camera you don't get as much detail as you get in person um, this card <laughs> has a lot going on and it's really pretty and in person you can see the different layers pretty easily I don't feel like the camera ends up picking up the vellum as well as I wish it had uh, but it still turns out really pretty and I'm pretty happy with how it looks uh, so I adhered the Yupo to the hammer mill uh, scalloped edge and then I used some big mama foam tape to just give it a little bit more dimension as I adhered it down to the base luckily this is super forgiving so if you feel like it's not straight as long as you haven't pushed it down you can actually lift it up again and kind of move it around if needed which I did need to do so that worked out well for me here and then once I was happy with where I was sitting I kind of just pressed it down um, all over the the area and my alcohol ink part is fully dry at this point so uh, there's no concern with touching it, which I will do here in a second when I actually lay down the pieces. Uh, it's fully dry here. And then I did kind of lay out with my leaves. I kind of played around with how I wanted them to lay for a little bit because I wasn't totally sure. I wasn't sure how much of the background I wanted to cover up. And in the end, I do end up covering up a bit of it, but you can still see it there. So you know that it's there. And of course, you guys saw me make it. So you know what it looks like. Um, but I just, I wanted the leaves to kind of end up in the forefront of this just because I don't know I, I love these leaves I love leaves you guys know that I love butterflies if you've been with me for any length of time you know how much I love butterflies and flowers but there's just something special about leaves especially this maple leaf 
you guys know I'm Canadian. Maple leaves have a special place in my heart. Um, and I just, I love this stamp set. Like it's just, I feel it's very versatile. And so I kind of wanted to bring it in in a bit of a different way. I haven't used it like this before. And I thought that that would be really fun. I like to use um, stamps and dies and whatnot that I've used before. I really kind of like people to know that there are so many ways that you can, you know, partake of things that you own. There's not just one use, you know, so I kind of like to try to use them in different ways. And then I felt like this card really needed a wax stamp. So I brought in um, my little wax stamp kit. I got this off of Amazon. It's linked and listed down below if you're interested at all. I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. And I picked out two white pieces of wax and then one kind of a metallic -y purple and one metallic -y blue. Sadly, they're not the exact same color as what I have in my card because that would have been cool. If Tim Holtz ever decides to make wax stamps or wax stuff, I would be all all over that. I mean, I know he has metallics, but if he did some colored stuff in, in like the distress range, oof, I would love that so much. I just, I'm having so much fun with wax stamps, but this is what I decided to do with them. And then the stamper that I have is actually a um, dream catcher which is not really relevant to this card, but it's just really pretty. So I thought I would use it and it's of good size. I have one that's a tree, but it's quite small and I felt like it didn't really fit with how large the leaves are. And then I did let you watch the wax seals, uh, the wax melt there just because I thought that that was really pretty. And I am going to kind of blend the colors together just a little bit and create this bit of a swirl pattern. They are a touch darker than the, like it's slightly different hue than the alcohol inks, but I think that they turned out really pretty you guys will have to tell me what you think and of course here you can't really see the detail of the wax stamp so I brought in a little bit of this wax pigment that's by um I think it's Stamperia makes it oh Prima sorry I think Prima makes this and I just kind of put, used my finger and just rubbed it into the areas of the stamp on the inside and then just rubbed off any excess that was sitting on top so that it would fill in the ridges and kind of give that pearly wax look and I thought that turned out kind of cute so I really like it I am having a blast with wax stamps you don't have to use this you could have had like a little bow with some twine or you know there are other things you could have done to kind of finish off the card I just have a lot of fun with wax seals so I kind of lean towards them and then I did tuck just a little sentiment into the little bottom corner there um, right behind that leaf just to kind of have it there but not be stealing the focus I feel like this card kind of, it does have a fair amount going on, but I think it all is really cohesive. So it kind of goes well together. And then because I'm never done with enough shine, I have to add more. I did bring in just a few sequins. These are kind of a subtle sequin. Um, they're my go-to sequin. They are the uh, Studio Katia Vanilla Luster Fusion sequins. Simon Says Stamp also sells them if you are not Canadian, because of course uh, Studio Katia is a Canadian company. But yeah, so that is the card I have for you guys here. I'm going to hold it up in all of its glory so you can check it out honestly it's way prettier in person this does not do it justice but it did turn out pretty neat so I'd love to know what you think of it leave me a like leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already um, I can't wait to show you guys what I have coming up I have some really cool stuff coming up for Christmas in July and that I'm really excited about so that is what I have for you guys today I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again very soon bye-bye for now